Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. The US there is underperforming the rest of the European markets as it struggles with that stronger US dollar as we get well into earnings season in the US with many companies complaining about that stronger greenback impact in their bottom line as um, as, begin, as as these companies begin to repatriate their funds back to the US. They don't get quite so many dollars for their profits that they get in other parts of the world. So we are actually developing a bit of a symmetrical triangle formation here on the US 30. Whereas uh, if you look at other markets such as the Germany there is a prime example is soldiering on obviously with this quantitative easing um, just uh, getting unveiled there last week is, is really put, uh, had a massive shot in the arm with the Germany 30 close to 11,000 so it's currently as near as 10,800 but not stone, stone's throw away from uh, from 11,000 should things continue uh, the way they are just now. So um, we're getting a narrowing range right here, which means most technical indicators are narrowing out as well. We're in the middle of two ranges, 17,546 and 17,738 on that market. Um, looking at the UK 100, stopping shy of uh, almost an all-time high there of 6,906. Which is testament to the strength of the of the US, of the UK market. In fact, if we just go from here, look at this from a monthly basis. Um, let's see exactly where we stand. If I just get my drawing tools out right here. Yeah, we are pretty much. Once we get above this this peak right here, um, we are pretty much bang on. Uh, a fresh all-time high on the UK 100, which I don't think is insignificant, to be quite honest. So you can get a bit of an idea of where we are just now. Uh, just a stone's throw away from 69.08. So then moving uh, at Japan to 25, broke out, out through 74.96, iron up 18.306 as well. Bank of, Japan, Bank of Japan still has the option to do more monetary stimulus in the future. We are seeing some interesting moves in dollar yen, quite a volatile dollar yen actually. We'll come back to that in a second. Trading above both um, both moving averages and just crossing the zero line there where other technicals are quite neutral. Um, then looking at dollar yen, uh, it's kind of flattening out, matter of fact. Almost got that death cross on the uh, moving averages right there. Probably more volatility expected, even with mo even with that really really strong U.S. dollar uh, rampant across most other FX pairs. Um, we've not been able to break above the heady heights of December of 121. Um, so maybe this is as far as the dollar is going to go until there's a, a stronger case. Uh, it's already quite strong in regards to the macro data coming out. So moving on to West Texas crude weakness still prevalent, still looking at a longer term potential support at 35 dollars 30 cents. Um, we are at 44.81 right now, uh, and basically, if we break below 43, uh, we might get a couple of uh, percentage point move in the back of that, because that would be uh, multi-year lows once again. Moving on to gold, it's kind of flatlining, coming off again. The last couple of sessions, unable to stay above $1,300. 1273 is the next potential support. We've almost got a, a negative, a bearish cross on the MACD, which, which from a technical perspective would be negative again. RSI is just crossing the 70% level, and the slow stochastic there is just about to break the 80% level. So this could be a hammer formation that we might have in the short term should we get any meaningful type of bounce after this bit of profit taking which could bounce from this 1273 to retarget 1300 again but failing that if it breaks below that uh, you'd have the uh, crossovers and most of these technical indicators so we'd be at, we would be eyeing up 1254 on gold so finishing up with gbp usd and cable we've ha had a surprising bounce on your dollar as um, the new Syriza party and Greece is probably shackled by the previous government policies of the of the incumbent um, government, um, and possibly not so much anti-euro um, behaviour expected from um, the new government out there. Um, so we've certainly had a, a decent bounce there. Albeit, it did come off first thing in the morning. We have had a bounce. Um, longer term potential support still remains at one spot zero seven eighty six. Uh, but it'll be interesting over the next couple of days because we do have some macro data due out later to see if your dollar can uh, continue its upward trajectory. Certainly it's at the top end of its range as we speak right now. So finishing up with cable, uh, cable similar kind of story, a little bit of a surge, uh, potential resistance, one spot 51.85 could be uh, a pivot for uh, a move back down to the downside. Certainly one spot 48.13 is the next potential support. Um, and that's kind of currently where we stand for that. So I come at data wise, we've got UK GDP, uh, US durable goods, and um, uh, CCI data due later on today. So there's a fair amount of, uh, of data that could impact the UK, 
cable and uh, the US markets. Let's fast forward on to Wednesday, you've got German CPI, good for your dollar. Of course, you can't forget that it is the FOMC two-day meeting, starts today, finishes tomorrow. Um, now, even though this, the, this interest rate is going to stay the same, it's all about the statement that comes out afterwards from the Fed about the huge quantitative easing pr uh, process that's been unveiled in, in the Eurozone and the impact that might have on the US economy. They might talk about the strength of the USD. So very important uh, decisions and statements going to be made over the next couple of days. And obviously, if you're a crude oil trader, you do, do have crude oil inventories on Wednesday to look forward to as well. So a fair amount of economic data. As ever, keep your eye on the chart forum for more technical trade setups from our global analyst team. Make insights part of your lead going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happens next.